Welcome. Welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. Today, we're going to talk about downsizing. Nobody really likes that. That's probably one of the hardest things to do when you're retired and you're thinking about downsizing from a larger home to a smaller home, and it can get very overwhelming. What room do I start with? And a lot of people just get stuck. Some people have a real problem with it. Um, I know people that have inherited their parents' house and haven't touched anything based on pure emotion. And uh, that's a rut that you don't want to get into. And you should talk to people about that. I, I just don't have it in me to clean out dad's stuff. I know a lady once we were sitting there talking, we were sharing a glass of wine. She was telling me about her dad's house. It was in Tempe, Arizona. And she says, you know, it's been empty for a couple of years now. And uh, she hasn't emptied it out. She says, I still have a lot of my stuff left in there and a lot of dad stuff. And I just can't bear to part with it. I said, well, who's living in it now? And now she's making the payments, folks. She's making like twelve to fourteen hundred bucks a month on the house. I go, well, who's who's in it now? Oh, well, nobody. She goes, my son wants to buy it, but he doesn't have the credit or the down payment. And I said, well, are you waiting for him to buy it? I said, because how long are you going to wait? She goes, well, I'd like for him to be able to buy it, but I don't think he can. I said, well, so what are you going to do? She says, well, I don't know. You know, it's got so much stuff in it. And so she gave me the address and I'm sitting there with my phone and I looked it up and she also told me that she's getting close to retirement and she would like to retire. So I looked at this house and I said, you know, I can get you an investor to come in there and they'll clean everything out. They'll buy the house. They'll clean everything out for you. And then you can take the proceeds from that house, put it into your current house. And now you don't have a mortgage and now you can retire. That sounds pretty good, doesn't it? She couldn't bring herself to do it. She couldn't even go into that house to get her own stuff. Now, those are extreme cases. But if you've got people that just generally aren't hoarders, but they got a lot of stuff, start with the simple things. So one of the things that uh, I recommend is, uh, you know, sometimes there's success in just working on the tiny things like this drawer. Everybody's got a junk drawer right? Everything goes in there. Sometimes you put in an extra ketchup packet, put little USB cords, you know, I might need that later. And that drawer that's called, I might need that later, which they've got Benadryl here. That makes sense. Um, it tends to build up over time and there's just no getting rid of it, it seems. And so you kind of want to take a second look at it and go, well, let me take that drawer out. And let me just spill this all out onto the dining room table. And I'll just put things back in at one at a time that I know I need. And then the rest, make a separate pile and just put it in a box. Once you conquer that one drawer, you'll feel pretty victorious. Now what you can do is go to another drawer or another cabinet in your house and go, okay, what's in this one? These are all the things that nobody else sees. So it's really easy mentally to get started that way. You say, okay, I'm going to get rid of everything in the junk drawer. The other one is your silverware drawer. Now that one can be a little harder. A fun little thing to do is if you have grandkids, especially if they're like over five years old, pull out that silverware and put it on a table and say, okay, um, you have a family of, you know, how many people do you usually have over for dinner? Six. 10. So you can tell the five-year-old, I need 10 of each one of these things and put them in this little organizer here. And they'll sit there and they'll go, they, they love that at that age. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. There's the knives, 10 forks, 10 spoons. Grandma, what do I do with this? And let them have fun with that. Then you can move to your pots and pans. So you see what I'm doing? I'm just working my way around through the kitchen slowly. Trust me when I tell you, you have way more glasses than you need. How many coffee cups do you have? What are the odds of you having 25 people over for coffee at one time? But I bet you've got a lot of collectible coffee cups. This one's from Niagara Falls. This one, you know, give those away if you can. Take them to Goodwill. Go through that cupboard. And then as you go through each kitchen cupboard, you will find that there's a lot of things that you just no longer need and you've got more than enough to downsize. So when you go to a smaller house and you don't have as many cabinets, no problem. And that stuff goes. The pantry, 
the pantry can be pretty daunting. You've probably got some appliances in there that no longer work. You probably have a coffee maker you haven't touched in 10 years. But because you already conquered the junk drawer and because you sorted your silverware, that becomes easier. Don't even think about going into the garage yet. The garage is the last place you want to go. That's overwhelming. So you want to do this with each individual room. Then you want to, after you've cleaned up all the stuff that's behind the cupboards that nobody can see, now you're going to concentrate on the stuff that people can see. What have you got? How many knickknacks do you have out there? Do you really need all that? Save it, put it in boxes, label it, and pull it off. And now visually, you can see things. You go, you know, that really does look a lot better over there. It won't take me as long to dust now. How many pictures do you have hanging on the wall? Do you really need all of them? I've seen people just have their entire family tree on the wall. Well, if you're thinking about moving, trim that down. And for one big reason, too, because when people go in to look for a home to buy, they just get creeped out seeing the family photos. Not because photos are creepy, but they feel like they're invading your space. There are statistics out there that show that people leave the home sooner when there's family photos hanging up than if there isn't. So take them all down if you're going to list your house. If you're not going to list your house and you're just doing some planning, then take out as many as you can and leave up as many memories as you'd like. And of course, don't throw them out, but put them somewhere in a, in a box that's padded and clearly labeled that you will eventually move to your garage. Then you're going to want to go in the bathroom and do the same thing. You're going to work on those cupboards. You're going to pull those drawers out. Every bathroom drawer has it. Bathroom has a junk drawer. Trust me, I do. I go in with a bag and I open it up and I just boom, boom, boom. We had a junk, junk drawer when I was uh, married and lived in Chandler that just I'd open it up all the time. And I looked at it and got, you know, it's got broken pencils and stuff. And you know what? I completely threw everything out. And my wife at the time, she didn't even notice. Um, that drawer was the catch-all. Get home, you got the, oh, that uh, goes here. Throw it in. Everybody's got one. And we have them in our bathrooms. We have them in our bedrooms. Computer cables. This is for guys. It's okay. You can throw out some USB cords. <laughs> I know. One of these days, I, got, I know I've got that USB-C somewhere. Let me go find it. You can, you can trim that down. <clears throat> you can also bungee them up, organize them a little bit better. Documents, pieces of paper, file them, go through everything. I helped one of my sons move once, and uh, he thought the best way to pack was to put everything in these plastic bags. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the move, I said, did you learn something here? You realize that if you were to put things in square boxes, we could have moved you with a hand truck 10 times as fast as it took us to carry these two bags at a time. So now when he gets ready to move, he goes, yeah, I know, Dad. I'm putting them in boxes. I said, everything's got to be square or rectangular. It makes it so much easier for the movers. And a lot of the younger generation, they don't move that much. So they think, well, I'll just put it in this bag. Well, that's a lot of trips back and forth from the U-Haul. It takes forever. It's the same way with you if you're retired. Put it in storage containers. Go into Best Buy, not Best Buy, go into Costco after January 1st. And they are, these tubs, these black and yellow tubs that you can store things with are on sale at an unbelievably low price because what? Everybody's putting their Christmas lights in there. So go into Costco after New Year's Day and get a whole bunch of these black and yellow tubs and you're set for life because they are, I mean, I've seen them like five and six bucks each. People just loading them up in their cart there at Costco. So uh, that's a way to get started. So there's a lot of different ways to downsize, a lot of different resources. Just don't be overwhelmed with it. Like I said at the beginning, start simple, start small, and be proud of your efforts, but just keep moving forward. Because when that day comes when you want to move, it's a little overwhelming when you have all this stuff hanging around. Hope that helps. If you have any questions, shoot me an email, rick, rickhelps.com.